sliced and diced. Is that how you like your audio? I didn't make this phrase up. It's a common thought that digital audio chops up the original, presumably perfect, analog signal, then reassembles it for you to enjoy in your listening room. Now, digital audio enthusiasts will outrage at this. They'll quote to you the theorems of Shannon and Nyquist and direct you to videos by some guy called Monty, who will prove to you, without a shadow of a doubt, that digital audio is perfect. Doesn't matter. <laughs> to an audiophile, nothing is perfect except the original analogue signal. And for the true audiophile experience, it must not be sliced, it must not be diced, and heaven forbid, what kind of audio needs reconstruction before you can listen to it? OK, before I come on to culinary matters, what's so perfect about the original analogue signal? Well, if we consider that outside of research laboratories, there's no such thing as a digital microphone. Other than, that is, an analogue microphone that has an internal slicer and dicer. <laughs> so we captured the real-life sounds of singers and musicians. Singers can be, and often are, musicians, so let's not get started on that one and drummers too, <laughs> in analogue. The microphone captures the acoustic sound waves and transduces them into an electrical signal, which is an analogue of the original sound. That's where that word, in audio, comes from. Here's a thought. The original sound is not analogue. To be analogue, it has to be an analogy of something. Commenters, please enlist in this possible pedant's revolt. Anyway, where the sound is high frequency, the electrical signal is high frequency. Where the sound is low level, the signal is low level. The electrical signal follows the original sound continuously to the limits of its resolution in terms of frequency, distortion and noise. But continuously. Always. And all the way to the vinyl record, the amp, the speakers and your analogue audiophile ears. No slice, no dice. <laughs> So where does this slice and dice thing come from? Is it just a crude analogy for audiophiles to raise an argument against digiophiles? <laughs> if that's a word, but we know what we mean. On first glance, it does seem that way. A crude insult, that's all it is. But no, let's examine further. And here I have an apple. <laughs> Not just any apple, but a Waitrose Bramley cooking apple. I'm going to make a crumble with it later. I'm going to warn you not to watch this if you're of a sensitive nature. I'm also going to say that this is not a knife skills video, so please comment me not on that. Stick to the topic. I'm cutting the apple in half because I have two demonstrations. First, I'm going to slice. Here goes. <laughs> An extra cut to make it more chefy. And now the dice. Here it is. Sliced and diced. Ready to cook. So where is this going? Well, this is my story, my allegory of the process of digital audio. The apple gets sliced and diced. An analogue audio signal gets sliced and diced, literally. With the apple, as you can see, it's sliced one way, then sliced the other way to give me cookable, digestible chunks. With digital audio, it's sliced along the time dimension, 44.1 thousand times per second. Or you can julienne slices at up to 384,000 slices per second. At the same time, it's sliced in the amplitude dimension, 65,536 slices for CD quality, 16 million and something slices for 2496. These slices in two dimensions give us the dices, the rough cubes that we end up with. Digital audio, sliced and diced. Now, Monty, going back to Monty. Monty will tell us that it isn't actually like this. It's worse. Suppose I make a cut. Make another cut a couple of millimetres across, then skip a centimetre, then another cut, another couple of millimetres. I'll try to do it. What could possibly go wrong? What I want are these very thin slices. I'm not going to do it crosswise because it's too difficult. But what I am going to do is keep the bits I want, the thin slices, and throw the rest away. Here we are, just a fraction of what I started with. Don't worry, unlike digital audio, nothing is going to waste. It's all going into my crumble. Now, let's get back to Monty again. 
This is Christopher Monty Montgomery, by the way, and I've linked his video in the description. In digital audio, according to Monty, and everything he says is correct, the digital signal only has a value at each instantaneous sample point, and there is no value at all everywhere in between. So I've sliced my apple, kept the very thin slices, and I've thrown the rest away. And so with digital audio, samples are taken instantaneously, exactly at the sample intervals. And everything that happens in between is thrown away into a digital compost bin. <laughs> That's the slicing, and similarly there are no values in between the amplitude samples, the dicing. If I could do this with my apple, I'd have infinitesimally thin slices, infinitesimally small dices, and nothing left. <laughs> or tens asymptotically to zero, as my old maths teacher would have said. <laughs> At this point, I think I'll let my commenters run with it. There's plenty more I could explain, but you have the link to Monty's video, which is excellent. You have your own science, your own opinions, your own preconceptions, your own prejudices. And I'm sure the comments section will bubble like a witch's cauldron. Digital audio is sliced and diced. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll come back to this topic after you have had your say. See you soon. A quick note from my man cave. <laughs> I tried this with an onion, sliced and diced by an able assistant, so as to avoid any potential bloodshed of my blood. I was barking out the instructions, so don't take this as the Gordon Ramsay method. It works, but the onion didn't give me such neat cubes as the apple, so I didn't use it in my video. Anyway, here it is for your pleasure, backed by some of my irritating slicing and dicing music. <laughs>